So there we were, we were going around with Sven Robinson and different people. I'm sure you were with us that night. And I remember we went downstairs and there was Margaret Mitchell in her Doris Day buffoon hairdo. She had a flowery, flowery dress that was kind of puffed out on the bottom with a nice belt around. And we went downstairs to John Barley's to the leather bar. And there was Margaret going from leatherman to leatherman, shaking their hands and talking to them. And we ran into two guys that were here visiting from Chicago. And I said, hi, this is Margaret Mitchell, our member of parliament. There's a federal election coming up and she's up for re-election and she's hoping that you could uh, support her and that. And they said, oh, well, don't waste your time with us. We're Americans, we're from Chicago. And they said, oh, boy, no one from... No one in Chicago ever comes around our, you know, to ask us for our vote. And I said, well, you know, she is the member of parliament. They say, and they go, oh, so she's running for parliament. And I said, no, no, she's our member. She's the sitting member, and she's running for real. And they said, you mean she's an po elected politician, and she's here trying to get real? I said, yeah, it's her constituency. This is within her boundaries. And these guys were totally baffled by this, that in Canada they'd be going around gay bars. Uh, and I said, yes. And Mark and said, oh, no, 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 I don't mind talking to you. And it was just that whole thing about, no, oh, oh, you, you can't vote for me, I better move on. And in those days, when gay people, you'd go into a gay bar and you'd uh, ask ahead of time, could we come in Saturday night, we've got our candidates. You'd give the DJ a little uh, note saying that so-and-so is in the bar tonight. Quite often, they would turn the music off and they would actually have uh, the DJ or maybe someone would be given a microphone or the owner of the club would welcome them into the club. And people at the end would be thunderous applause. And, and what I explain to people is, before we go on a bar tour, I said, we're not going on kind of a freaky kind of Halloween tour here. We're going, remember, the people you'll be talking to tonight are voters. These are people that vote, and you want their vote. So think of it that way. They'd go through bars, and they'd run into people they knew for years, like fellow teachers or people, you know, that were in unions or people that sh stores that they had shopped in. And they'd run into these people at these bars. And these people would say, oh, yeah, I've got a lawn sign. Yeah, I'm working on election day. Yeah, I donated. I, you know, can I help you in the campaign? And afterwards, we'd go out to Doll and Penny's or one of those you know, Hamburger Mary's to have a little debriefing because these people just couldn't go home <laughs> and sleep after this experience. And they would be amazed at how knowledgeable gay people were about politics. They would say, I'm not in your constituency, but I'm in the one next door. They would know all this stuff. And they, were, they were amazed at how politicized gay people were. And uh, the only place that there was trouble was the Ambassador Hotel, which was kind of the working class of the working class. When they turn off the country of Western music and introduce politicians, the crowd would boo. But at all the other ones, they would all, all cheer, even if they weren't their favorite politician. Gay people really showed their respect, so it was a good, good example. And then there'd be other candidates who c couldn't make it that night or whatever. But the next day they'd say, well, what was it like, right? And they'd say, oh, it was amazing. I handed out so many cards, buttons. Everyone was wearing buttons in the bar by the time I left. And they were signing up to be volunteers. So those are the kind of grassroots kind of work that we did. Now, so much of our, our, the work is, well, we send out an email. But back then, we didn't have a lot. We didn't have resources. We didn't have government grants. Government wouldn't give us nothing. So in a way, we had to be more grassroots, more innovative. We had more public meetings where we would have pe people come. and Sometimes they'd get screamed at and hooted at. We'd go to the Peace March with our banner. We'd go to International Women's Day. We'd write letters to the editor. Uh, we were we had to be much more activist mm -hmm. uh, in those days and grassroots and in a way I think we've lost that in a way I think we now are waiting for you know the email or 
waiting for a newspaper to come out. But we did lots of things, and of course, being an ex-Catholic, standing in front of the Catholic Church downtown and yelling, screaming, you people, fuck you, fuck you, you know what? Those were great times, and then we go for a beer after, we go for, now in the gay rights movement we have so many people, oh, it's against our religion, oh, it's, you know, oh, we're waiting for the Pope to hand down, you know, you don't wait for the Pope, it's like either he gets off his ass, you know, denounces his time and in supporting uh, Hitler and being a brown shirt, and saying what Hitler said about with gay people and what I'm saying about gay people are equally wrong and I want to apologize. Until that time, I'm not interested. To be fair, he was in the Hitler Youth, which wasn't the yeah, same as well, the that's right. shirts. But, but well, yes, he, uh, yeah. he should be saying yeah. that that was wrong then and it's wrong today. And well, I, I'm sorry, but I'm uh, uh, ethnic German. And the thing is, is uh, not every German was a Nazi. That's right. And not every German sat by and did Hitler's work and, and, uh, and said we were just following orders. There were people that, that said no, and there were people that said yes, and there were a lot of people that said nothing. So uh, Too many. I, I, don't, I don't agree with the thing about, oh, you know, I was just switching. I was just working at the railway yard, switching the switches, or... I don't believe it. I think people have to be very clear on issues around genocide. What were you doing? And if you were doing nothing. And this Pope, I want to say, was the henchman for the Polish Pope that went out and did a purge around the world of gay priests, and not of, not of pedophiles, but went after gay legitimate gay priests and purged them and uh, set up show trials and ruined a lot of people's lives that had no reason to have their lives ruined and then he became Pope and he used as much of the same language as, as uh, the Nazis about gay people. So I don't, f uh, I don't feel that I've missed anything by not being in the Catholic Church. But I want to say to other people in the queer community who, who, uh, who are very unwilling to take on their own religions, I have no time for them because I did. I gave everything up of who I was, my identity as a Catholic. And I don't care who, what religion you are, other people have to do the same or the religion has to change. I don't have a problem with people being part of organized religion, but I think people have to stop making excuses that it's easier for me as a German Catholic to stand in front of a cathedral and say fuck off than it is to stand in front of a, 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 a Sikh temple or a mosque or the Anglican Church, which is now selling out to the Catholic Church. Uh, uh, and evangelical churches. Many, many brave people in our community stood up to these powers, and I think everyone has to. There's no free ride, and there's no such thing as, it's harder for me to come out than it was for you. Every person who comes out, every person who challenges who they are and, and is true is equally important, and it's the most courageous thing that queers can do is to come out. And I think those, uh, the, it's, we've almost got into a time now where people are saying, oh, but I can't come out. Well, I can't. well people that who, who came out in a very different time. If you can't come out now, when can you, you know? It, you know, it's, uh, but I'm not saying it's not, it's not hard to come out even today. But when you go to Templeton High School, which is just blocks from here, and they have the day without words, where people sign up to say they're not going to speak all day in solidarity with gay people amongst them who can't. And 500 students can sign up. I'll tell you, it's a lot easier than living in humble Saskatchewan, where in school being taught that if you touched yourself, you would burn in hell. I mean, you know. <laughs>